Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this video is going to be about uh, restoring the bed, specifically the, the fender wells on my uh, 2006 Silverado Duramax. Uh, it's part of a playlist here that you can check out some of the other ones. Um, basically, this, this is a common problem on these trucks. You can see my bed is, is upside down. It's been removed. You can watch the previous videos for that. Uh, but uh, I do have some some rust problems and so I'll kind of give you a, an overview here of, of what we're looking at So along the front we have uh, so I did sandblast Basically the underside of this and sort of kind of the in you know the inner sides of it uh, as well as the uh, Fender wells as well and I did a little bit around the outside here and basically what happened is where anywhere there was rust It just disintegrated. It was a pretty heavy-duty uh, sandblaster a consolidated compressor and uh, yeah I did a number on this so basically this can have to be replaced um, the standard way of doing this is you'll actually buy um, a fitted panel and weld it in place um, I don't know that I'm gonna do that and the reason is because I like to be different but because uh, really they're only about a hundred bucks for both but most of this section of panel is hidden behind the uh, sort of the rubber plastic um, wheel arches or the flares and that's also largely why these rust in the first place is because the flares hold the water in as well as just the construction so um, I don't really it doesn't need to be perfect is kind of what I'm getting at so I don't need a perfect finish I don't need the welds uh, to be perfectly finished and bonded I just need to be able to make sure that this is structurally sound and prevent it from rusting in the future so um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away the outside I'm going to cut away a bit of the inside and I'm going to fabricate some sheet metal to fix it. Uh, I also have this piece right here, which is some flat steel stock that I'm actually gonna use to reconstruct uh, this, uh, this line or this, uh, I guess the outer rim of it, if you will. So that's my strategy. I'm not sure how it's gonna work. This is actually pretty thick stuff. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, so it's gonna be really strong. And I gotta do both sides, so. Um, that's kind of what I'm going to start with. I do have a couple other dents in uh, in this bed that I'm going to have to deal with. I got a little bit of rust you can see over here, and um, I think I have a dent. It's all upside down, so I can't remember. I think it's on the other side, um, but in this location. So uh, yeah, so we're going to get to work on that. Um, hopefully, you learn something. Starting off by just applying the wheel arches here and then tracing them on so I kind of know how much metal I have to work with here that has to stay hidden behind. And prefabbing up with some construction paper to just sketch out kind of about what I'm going to need to cover all the rusted portions here. And I use a construction paper. I did a few iterations of this until ultimately deciding on a, a shape that looked about right. I traced that shape onto my sheet metal and then cut it out here with my air shear. Um, it's actually a really nice way to cut sheet metal like this because this stuff can cut you if you're not paying attention. And just sizing it up here, making sure I got everything right before I break out the cutting wheel. And so this is just my angle grinder with a cutting wheel. Um, this worked okay. You could also just use a pair of uh, tin snips or shears. So I cut out the inside and the outside here. And I'm doing a little test fitting here on my, my primary arch support here as well. And I tuck this panel in behind, so it's actually sitting on the inside. And then on the inner side here, I put the, the hard panel. So now I've treated it with some weld-through primer, uh, both the exterior sheet metal as well as the arch support. And tacking it in with the MIG welder here in a few spots, making sure it's snug as best as possible. So the weld-through primer is going to prevent it from rusting inside there, the parts that I, I'm not going to be able to treat and paint afterwards. Uh, also, it allows uh, the weld itself will be protected from corrosion from the primer. And that's looking pretty close. And here's just a view from the top. And I'm tacking in the arch support as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut with tin snips here and then bend over these little tabs and then tack them into place. And I'll just kind of keep doing one at a time, moving across, bend it, hammer it down, tack it into place kind of get better as I go through here and ultimately there it's all tacked into place and just finishing off with some extra spot welds. All right so everything everything's shaped we can uh, hope that this fits. I have to run, 
there's about a finger width gap in there, so I'll have to improve on the second side. But hmm. I how I pull that off. All right, so it gives you a view of what it looks like with the spot welds along the bottom as well as the spot welds on the top. And as you can see, it penetrates right through, and you notice the weld through primer there on the inside as well. It's all that copper color. So now I'm just adding in spot welds. I'm not going to weld it completely all the way across because I'm going to end up sealing this with uh, Bondo glass later. But here are um, some supports. So now I need the outer fender to attach to the inner fender. Whereas before, it was fastened all the way across with spot welds, um, two flanges together. I don't have that anymore. So I'm just adding three of those things to just hold it there. And then I'm also leaving a gap, which we'll talk about more later. And just grinding down my welds. And doing a test fit on the other side now. So I learned a little bit from the first side. And what I learned is it's best to shape this to the actual arch. Because this is the actual true shape. Because the rusted bit, you can't really tell. But that's the actual true shape that it's supposed to be. So I started with that, and so I'm going to get the right shape this time, and I'm not going to have that finger gap. And again, tracing it out, and then cutting it out with the grinder. And I have to cut the outside part as well as the inside fender as well. And this one had a little bit more rust on the inside. And just kind of cleaning it up a little bit here. And I found it was actually easier to cut that inside bit here with the shears. And uh, I would suggest that because when it is rusted, the shears cut through it very, very easily until you kind of know when you've gone far enough. And again, cutting it out here with my air shear as well, according to the template that I created on paper first. And again, we got it uh, painted up there with the weld through primer. Um, just making sure all of the surfaces are good for welding now and clamping it into place. And as before, tacking it into place. And I'm adding a number of spot welds, obviously, along the front. And here you can see from the top. So this time I'm doing a little bit differently as I tack this one in. Uh, I'm actually going to make all the tabs first, and I'm going to cut them out here. You see I'm cutting one cut each, and then I'm going to cut them back and cut them at a bit of an angle that kind of creates a little wedge cut out as you can see. So when I weld them over there's a little bit more room. And I'm putting it down, trimming it off, and this time I'm going to be using my spot welder which I picked up exclusively for this purpose. And it works so much nicer because you don't have the splatter and you obviously don't end up with the, uh, the bead from the weld. Uh, it just kind of almost glues the two together if you will. Uh, it ended up working really nicely. I was really happy with the spot welder for this, but it's hard to get in and it's extremely heavy. So there you can see my outer welds. Again, that's about all of the spot welds that I'm going to need for this. And uh, then from the spot welds on the top, you know, it's just much cleaner finish than what it was otherwise. Okay, just to recap how I did these, and the second one did turn out better than the first. Um, so the, the big thing is this whole, whole patch, falls behind you, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. You see, it's completely covered, right? So right off the bat, I'm not worried about it being perfect or I would have just ordered the panels off of uh, Amazon. However, so there's a slight body line here. There's a slight sort of curve right here. I did try and simulate that in the new panel. Um, but ultimately, the piece I need to replace, I need to replace the outside. I had to replace this arch line here. And then I had to clean up the rust on the in inner fender as well. And so a few things. First of all, I wanted the exterior piece to tuck in behind the outer piece. Um, and why did I want to do that? Well, because I wanted the welds to be behind the surface. So uh, on a butt weld, you're putting two things together in welding. In a lap weld, you're going over top. And so the nice thing is then your welds can be hidden. And so it doesn't take a lot of grinding. You don't lose any of the strength in your welds. Uh, by doing it this way. So then when I come in Bondo, I just Bondo right over the top of all this and reshape this contour and you're done. Bob's your uncle. Um, so I do have to grind these in a couple little spots where you can just kind of feel them sticking out. It's not many, but there's a few little spots. But for the most part, the welds are, are, are hiding. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I needed a fairly strong arch through here. Uh, it is what this thing mounts on. 
Uh, but it's also where all the strength for the exterior panel comes from and you know, impact resistance and so on. So I took a pretty heavy duty gauge steel uh, and shaped that to the fender support. And, and then I folded it over on the top. So um, this, this part right along here, this ridge, this will be close to the outer edge. So when I bondo, there'll be more bondo down here than up here, if that makes sense, in the three dimensions. Um, but then I could wrap that around, get that nice and sealed up, get an edge here without any holes, uh, and then I could use my, my spot welder to spot weld these down, which worked a lot better than the other side, which splattered everywhere. Um, I was using the weld through primer, which you saw, which is hence the copper color, and uh, it, it results in a little bit more splatter, although the weld is supposed to be uh, better insulated from uh, rust and corrosion down the road. So that was the logic here, and then at the very end I did attach a couple little support panels on the inside. Um, I'll give you a little look at that. <coughs> so you can see those here. They don't look so great, but this is all going to get covered with uh, fiber, or, uh, fiberglass bondo anyway. And I left uh, the hole here. This is for drainage. You don't need this thing to be sealed because remember this whole thing's upside down. So water will come in here, it'll spray it in here from whatnot, and it'll run down and then it'll drip out. It'll drip onto here and then it'll drip away. Um, I want to make sure that I encourage that. So I want the dripping to actually happen. I want the water to get out of there and I want the muck to get out of there. So leaving a big hole isn't too bad as long as I can reinforce it with a couple little brackets, which is what I've done. So that's the strategy and now we'll kind of move on to the next part to the bed. All right, so just a couple little cleanup things here. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll note that one of the bed bolts was forever stuck in here. So I have to just cut that out and replace it with a new steel panel. And so what I do is I weld a nut to a replacement steel panel, and then I flip it upside down, and I weld it in place here. So I got the old one out, and now the new panel going in and welding that in place. So I did this a lot on my Jeep build, so I'm pretty familiar with this practice, and it worked out really well. And then when I'm done, I run a tap through the thing and verify it with a bolt that it threads in nicely. And it's in now exactly the right spot, exactly the right thread, and very strong. And then up here, uh, this is on the driver's side where just for whatever reason, there must have been a lot of water spray here. And so this piece is completely rusted out. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any footage for some reason of me welding in the replacement panel, so I just formed a piece of sheet metal and put it over the top like this and then MIG welded it into place and uh, that'll be fine, just fine. And just a little side thing here, I'm welding in these little spacers. These are for the fifth wheel support brackets and it's just to strengthen the part of the bed where the fifth wheel supports uh, go from the frame to the bed and then the rails sit on top. Now this is a fiber disc wheel, I think this is a six inch maybe? And so I didn't have the proper tool for this. So I just uh, put this onto an angle drill. And this kind of eats through your paint. So when you're applying your Bondo, you want to really dig down. You want to get it as close to the metal as you can. And you want it to be really, really rough. So in this case, it's a 36 uh, grit flap wheel. And it just shreds down the paint with a very little effort. And you don't want to spin it too fast, nice and slow, and dig it down without creating heat. And now this is the Bondo glass. Uh, I've also referred to it as uh, fiberglass filler. And so what it is, it's your normal Bondo with chunks of glass chopped up and mixed into it. So it's a lot stronger. And I use, again, this on the bottom of my Jeep. And I did much like I did here, areas where you just have weakened steel. Um, you can even fill some small holes. Uh, you just sort of paint this peanut, peanut buttery type stuff on there. And it will firm up. Um, these panels so they're plenty strong and then I'll come back later of course and, and treat these with primer and ultimately I'm going to go with a gravel guard in here. Alright so now I'm putting the Bondo glass onto the outer well and you want to put this stuff on good and thick. That's a little bit different than drywall where you're trying to just get away with the minimum. Uh, you're going to really put this on there nice and thick so you only have to do one coat of it and then you're going to shape it with this cheese grater. So here's a picture of it and it's called the Stanley Sure Form. And they're about $15. They're an amazing little tool. And it's, it's kind of like a rasp. And so you wait until your Bondo is just past the wet state. So it's starting to harden up. Um, it no longer kind of comes off with your finger. But you can kind of peel it off into these small kind of stringy bits. And as you can see, this is the result of once you kind of start to shave it down. So you can get rid of a lot of the bulk. 
before you actually have to turn around and do the grinding, which I'm doing, of course, with the fiber disc. So this saves you a lot of effort, but it also really helps you shape it and get the shape you want. It's easier than doing it with a sanding wheel because it happens a lot faster. And then you're not also filling your shop with dust. You're just filling it with these little bits of uh, Bondo string. And so now I'm just finishing all the shaping with the uh, fiber disc wheel before I apply the stage two Bondo. So this is your normal auto body filler. And again, apply it nice and thick. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but nice and thick. And then you're going to come back and shape it once it starts to harden up a little bit. And it's all about timing, just getting it when it's at the right point. And this is a lot easier to do uh, with the stage two Bondo than it was with the, with the glass filler. And once that's done, I start sanding with the long block. So this is actually a dura block. Uh, so whether you have a long sanding block or the dura block, it doesn't really matter. But you want something that's nice and straight so you can get straight profiles and edges. And here I'm actually finishing it up with uh, sort of a random orbit sander um, just to take some of the edge off and clean it up. And then the part where my dad drove into a pole, uh, straighten that out with the dura block. Again, this is a nice big flat part of the panel. So you need to do this with a nice flat block or you're going to end up with a wavy finish. And so the dura block works nice. I think I'm using a uh, 60 grit with this. And now I'm coming along and I am finishing the entire thing with a DA sand at about 120, uh, which will kind of rough up the entire surface, take off any of the bad paint, any of the little holes and things like that, so I can move on to surfacing. All right, so uh, finished with all the, the fenders in the Bondo here. Uh, so obviously this video was around how to rebuild your rusty fenders. Uh, as you saw, I had rust kind of up on the inside. I had rust obviously right through on the outside. And I, for whatever reason, decided not to buy sort of the panels that you kind of custom, that are custom fit for this and you just weld them in. Um, you know, they're not really expensive. I think this was just more that I could do at this point. I wanted to try. So um, one of the advantages was all of my welding was underneath the surface uh, versus having to, you know, do butt welds along the edge. That was kind of a little bit of a, a reason also I got to insert a really strong bar from here all the way across to here uh, which is about eighth inch steel stock flat stock and I felt that just added a little bit of strength so you know you do it one way do it the other it's kind of up to you I just wanted to demonstrate that you could do it this way um, yeah and then after that we put on the, the Bondo glass then followed up with the normal Bondo and then with a little bit of the glazing putty to finish it off this thing is all now sanded down to about 220 and I'm going to start with the primer next and uh, then we'll do that in the next video which will be the, the priming and the block sanding and so on and getting it nice. This is a truck at the end of the day so it doesn't have to be perfect uh, but the bed is now completely dealt with on rust. Um, I did have a few other dents and things as you can see throughout the video that I did fix up. Uh, my dad drove into a post once upon a time here um, and overall it, you know it just takes time so um, but now, you know, this is all nice and smooth. We're gonna we're up right there. We're gonna again do the priming and see how it turns out. So uh, hopefully this was informative for you and hopefully you stick around and see how this project ends. Thanks a lot.